The Cayman Islands are a tropical paradise in the Caribbean Sea, famous for their white sand beaches, crystal clear waters, and luxury resorts. But behind the idyllic scenery, there is a dark side to this island nation. A side that few people know about and even fewer dare to talk about. A side that involves billions of dollars, powerful elites, and shady deals. A side that has made the Cayman Islands one of the most notorious tax havens in the world. How did this small British overseas territory become a magnet for the rich and powerful who want to hide their money and activities from the law? And what are the consequences for the rest of the world? In this documentary, we will explore the history, the culture, and the politics of the Cayman Islands and reveal how they became a haven for dirty money. The Cayman Islands were first discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1503, who named them Las Tortugas after the numerous sea turtles he saw. For the next three centuries, the islands were mostly uninhabited, except for occasional visits by pirates, privateers, and shipwrecked sailors. In the 18th century, the islands became a British colony, and a small population of settlers arrived, mostly from Jamaica, Scotland, and England. They developed a modest economy based on fishing, farming, and turtle hunting, and relied on slave labor until slavery was abolished in 1835. The islands remained a quiet and isolated outpost of the British Empire until the 20th century. In the 1950s, the Cayman Islands began to attract tourists, especially from the United States, who were drawn by the island's natural beauty and friendly people. The tourism industry boomed, and the islands became a popular destination for foreigners, celebrities, and scuba divers. But tourism was not the only source of income for the Caymans. The turning point came in 1962, when Jamaica gained its independence from Britain and the Cayman Islands chose to remain under British rule. This decision gave the islands a unique status, as they were able to enjoy the protection and stability of the British crown, while also having a high degree of autonomy and self-government. This paved the way for the development of their offshore financial industry, which would soon transform the islands into a global hub for finance and commerce. But how did the Cayman Islands become so attractive to the wealthy and the powerful? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of their offshore system? To answer these questions, we need to understand the concept of a tax haven and how it works. A tax haven is a jurisdiction that offers low or no taxes, as well as secrecy and anonymity to individuals and corporations that want to reduce their tax burden or hide their assets from authorities. Tax havens are not illegal, but they are often used for illicit purposes, such as money laundering, tax evasion, and fraud. The Cayman Islands are considered one of the most prominent tax havens in the world for several reasons. First, they have zero corporate or income tax on money earned outside their territory. This means that foreign investors and businesses can register their companies in the Cayman Islands and pay no taxes on their profits, dividends, or interest. This makes the Cayman Islands especially popular among hedge fund managers who manage billions of dollars in assets for their clients. Second, they have a high level of secrecy and confidentiality which makes it difficult to trace the true owners and beneficiaries of the offshore entities. The Cayman Islands do not require companies to disclose their shareholders, directors, or financial statements. They also do not exchange information with other countries unless there is a criminal investigation or a court order. This means that anyone who wants to hide their money or their identity can do so in the Cayman Islands without fear of being exposed or prosecuted. Third, they have a stable and reputable legal and financial system which gives them credibility and trust among the international community. The Cayman Islands follow the English common law, which is widely recognized and respected around the world. They also have a well-developed banking and regulatory sector, which provides a range of services and products to their clients. They have a strong reputation for being professional, efficient, and reliable, which attracts more business and investment to their shores. These are some of the main features that make the Cayman Islands a tax haven. But how did they develop this system, and what are the consequences for the rest of the world? To find out, we need to go back to the origins of their offshore industry and see how it evolved over time. The Cayman Islands offshore industry began in the 1960s 
when a local lawyer named William Walker had a brilliant idea. He realized that the islands had a unique opportunity to attract foreign capital by offering a low-tax and high-secrecy regime. He drafted the first legislation that allowed the formation of offshore companies, trusts, and banks, and promoted the islands as a favorable destination for international business. Walker's idea was a success, and soon the Cayman Islands became a hotspot for offshore finance. They attracted clients from all over the world, especially from the United States, which was facing high taxes and regulations at home. The Cayman Islands offered them a way to avoid or minimize their tax obligations and to protect their assets from creditors, lawsuits, or government scrutiny. As you can imagine, exempt companies soon became vehicles for concealing all kinds of illicit activities, from embezzlement to insider trading to organized crime and even intelligence fronts. With the global rise of drug trafficking in the 1970s and 80s, the Caymans saw an opportunity, positioning themselves as an attractive base for the influx of dirty cash. With this new tax and secrecy haven now open for business just a short plane hop from the U.S. mainland, the world's wealthy and corporations started shoveling money into the islands. Seeking to hide assets and lower taxes, they set up shell companies with P.O. box addresses in the Caymans but conducting business around the world. By 1979, around $1 billion was parked in Cayman accounts. Today, the Cayman Islands host more than 100,000 companies, 600 banks, and 10,000 hedge funds, managing over $7 trillion in assets. The Cayman Islands offshore industry thrived on exploiting loopholes and gaps in the international tax system. For example, many U.S. companies used the Cayman Islands to avoid paying taxes on their foreign profits by creating shell companies that had no real presence or operations on the islands, but were registered as Caymanian entities. These shell companies would then receive payments from their foreign subsidiaries and transfer them to their U.S. parent companies without paying any taxes in between. This practice, known as profit shifting, cost the U.S. government billions of dollars in lost revenue every year. The offshore boom transformed the Caymans from a sleepy backwater to a wealthy and influential player in the world economy. It has also brought along a host of problems and controversies. But likely the most consequential early decision was the one allowing banks in the islands to operate insurance subsidiaries, called captives, untouched by regulations elsewhere. These cash-flush captives fueled a shadow banking boom that today sees the Caymans host most of the world's hedge funds and private equity funds. With this influx of shadow banks, money hidden from taxes is just the start. Much may be tied to fraud, corruption, market manipulation, and other financial crimes as well. By the 1990s, evidence was mounting globally that tax and financial havens like the Caymans were facilitating a tidal wave of money laundering, fraud, tax evasion, and corruption. With trillions in global capital now offshore and largely unregulated, Criminals had discovered an unprecedented system enabling their activities and hiding their identities and assets. Year after year, global authorities discovered government officials embezzling aid money, corporations avoiding billions in taxes, and criminal rings washing dirty cash, all masked by shell companies and accounts in the Caymans and sister tax havens. In many developing nations, kleptocratic regimes were found hiding stolen wealth to pad the bank accounts of dictators and cronies. In the Caymans and elsewhere, bankers asked few questions as accounts were created anonymously or in the names of lawyers and proxies. Questions are rarely asked about the source of money either. The global elite had unlocked a secret money portal, allowing them to drain tax dollars and state resources from nations around the world. One of the most famous examples of this was the case of Alan Stanford, the financier who orchestrated a massive Ponzi scheme in the 2000s. Stanford was a prominent figure in the financial world, chairing the Stanford Financial Group. He devised an elaborate scheme, estimated at around $7 billion, selling certificates of deposit from his bank in Antigua with the promise of high returns. Stanford decided to use the Cayman Islands, among other offshore locations, to shield his fortune and facilitate his illegal activities. He set up a complex web of offshore companies and trusts, which he controlled through various intermediaries. By transferring his assets to these entities, he claimed to have no direct ownership or control over them. The Cayman Islands played a crucial role in his scheme, 
allowing him to move money through multiple accounts and jurisdictions, obscuring its origin and making it difficult to trace. Despite his efforts, Stanford's scheme eventually unraveled. He was indicted for fraud and other charges. He faced a substantial prison sentence and was eventually convicted. He served a significant time in prison and was ordered to pay substantial restitution. But the use of offshore strategies like those in the Cayman Islands had initially helped him in prolonging his scheme. Stanford was not the only one to use the Cayman Islands and other offshore havens for dubious financial activities. Over the years, these locations have been linked to numerous scandals and controversies involving some of the most powerful and influential individuals and organizations in the world. In the next chapter, we will explore more of these cases and see how such offshore havens have facilitated corruption, crime, and injustice on a global scale. The Cayman Islands have been involved in some of the biggest scandals and investigations of the past decades, exposing the dark side of their offshore system. Let's look at some of the most notable cases. Take the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, or BCCI, which collapsed in 1991 in one of the biggest banking frauds in history. Regulators later alleged the bank secretly controlled a Cayman Islands entity called Capcom, used to launder money for criminals and terrorists. Or take Philip Barron, an American lawyer who pleaded guilty in the 1990s to laundering $7 million linked to former Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega, funneling the money through Cayman shell companies and bank accounts instead of the United States or take Enron. The energy giant that collapsed in 2001 after being exposed for accounting fraud and market manipulation. Enron used the Cayman Islands to create likely 600 of offshore entities, which it used to hide its debts, inflate its profits, and evade taxes. Enron's downfall resulted in the loss of billions of dollars for investors, employees, and creditors, and the imprisonment of several executives. Next on the list is FIFA. The International Soccer Federation that was rocked by a massive corruption scandal in 2015, after several officials were indicted by the U.S. Department of Justice for racketeering, bribery, and money laundering. FIFA used the Cayman Islands to funnel millions of dollars in bribes and kickbacks, which were paid by sports marketing companies and broadcasters, in exchange for the rights to host and televise major soccer tournaments. FIFA's scandal tarnished the reputation of the world's most popular sport and led to the resignation of its president, Sepp Blatter. Next is HSBC. The global banking giant that was fined $1.9 billion by the U.S. government in 2012 after admitting to laundering money for drug cartels, terrorists, and rogue states. HSBC used the Cayman Islands to open thousands of accounts for high-risk clients without verifying their identities, sources of funds, or business activities. HSBC's scandal exposed the vulnerability of the global financial system and the complicity of the banking sector in facilitating crime and violence. Next is the 1MDB scandal, in which the Malaysian state fund was allegedly looted of billions of dollars by its former prime minister and his associates, who used Cayman entities and accounts to launder and transfer the money. But this is not the end. In 2016, the massive Panama Papers leak shocked the world by exposing how over 200,000 anonymous shell companies helped everyone from criminals to celebrities conceal assets overseas. Over half were registered in the Caymans. The Panama Papers exposed the role of the Cayman Islands as a major conduit for offshore transactions involving politicians, celebrities, businessmen, and criminals. The Panama Papers sparked public outrage and triggered investigations and reforms in many countries. Then, the 2017 Paradise Papers revealed how corporations like Nike, Apple, and Disney had secretly funneled billions in offshore tax havens like Bermuda and the Caymans. These are just some of the examples of how the Cayman Islands have been involved in scandals and controversies that have shaken the world. Clearly, despite promises of reform, opaque financial systems continued humming along, helped by banks, law firms, and accounting giants. But by now, international authorities had run out of patience. In late 2020, the European Union officially branded the Caymans and other UK offshore territories as non-cooperative jurisdictions, which is essentially a tax haven blacklisting. 
The Caymans immediately cried foul, citing all the steps it had taken to bolster financial transparency, from passing laws requiring corporate registers to launching public beneficial ownership directories. But critics counter that loopholes remain. Trusts don't need to identify owners while remedies for evasion remain weak. And questions linger whether political will truly exists to shut the door on such a profitable offshore machine. Indeed, in 2022, a leaked report revealed the British Virgin Islands, the Caribbean's other big tax haven, actually tripled their offshore registrations after pledging reform post the Panama Papers scandals. So do these sunny islands really want to give up their tax haven model if the money keeps flooding in? The ending has yet to be written, yet to be. The Cayman Islands offshore system has had profound impacts, both positive and negative, on the people and the planet. On the one hand, the offshore system has brought economic benefits, both to the Cayman Islands and to their clients. The Cayman Islands have become one of the richest and most developed countries in the Caribbean, with a high standard of living and a diversified economy. Their clients have been able to save money, invest more, and grow their businesses, thanks to the low-tax and high-secrecy regime. On the other hand, the offshore system has also brought social and environmental costs, both to the Cayman Islands and to the rest of the world. The Cayman Islands have faced issues such as inequality, corruption, crime, and dependency as a result of their reliance on offshore finance. The rest of the world has lost billions of dollars in tax revenue, which could have been used for public services such as health, education, and infrastructure. The offshore system has also enabled the exploitation of natural resources, the violation of human rights, and the acceleration of climate change by allowing the perpetrators to evade accountability and responsibility. The Cayman's offshore industry has serious consequences for the rest of the world, especially for developing countries and ordinary citizens. According to some estimates, the Caymans hold over $1.7 trillion in offshore assets, which is equivalent to 6% of the global banking assets. This means that a huge amount of money is being diverted from the public coffers and from the productive sectors of the economy to the offshore accounts of the rich and powerful. This deprives governments of vital revenues that could be used for public services, such as health, education, and infrastructure. It also undermines the rule of law, democracy, and human rights by enabling corruption, crime, and oppression. It also creates an unfair and unequal system in which the wealthy and the well-connected enjoy the benefits of globalization, while the poor and the marginalized bear the costs. But what can be done to address these issues and to create a more just and equitable world? There are several challenges and opportunities for change, both at the local and the global level. At the local level, the Cayman Islands have been under pressure, both internally and externally, to reform their offshore system and to increase their transparency and cooperation. The Cayman Islands have made some efforts, such as signing international agreements, implementing new regulations, and participating in information exchange initiatives. However, these efforts have been criticized as being insufficient, ineffective, or insincere by some observers and activists. The Cayman Islands have also faced resistance from some of their clients and stakeholders who have vested interests in maintaining the status quo. At the global level, there have been calls for a more coordinated and comprehensive approach to tackle the problem of tax havens and to create a fairer and more transparent global tax system. There have been some initiatives, such as the OECD's Base Erosion and Profit Shifting BEPS, project, the UN's Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, and the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. However, these initiatives have also faced challenges, such as the lack of political will the complexity of the issue, and the diversity of the stakeholders. So there you have it. The untold story of how a Caribbean paradise transformed itself into a haven for hidden wealth over the course of a century. Attracted by beautiful surroundings and the allure of secrecy, the world's richest saw the Caymans as the perfect place to maximize fortunes, even if it meant duping tax collectors back home or concealing illicit activities offshore. Lured by lucrative registration fees, the local financial industry then evolved from quaint trusts to a sophisticated international hub, handling trillions in anonymous capital without asking too many inconvenient questions. And despite recent pledges of transparency, doubts remain 
whether the Caymans truly wants to abandon a scheme that's pumped up its economy while providing financially creative billionaires everything money can buy, including secrecy. But that's the thing about tax havens and offshore schemes. They sound tempting until scandal leaks out, sparking calls for accountability. So only time will tell if more leaks emerge and pressure ratchets up on the Caymans and other financial hideaways to mend their ways, or take their shady secrets elsewhere to another obscure island paradise. Either way, it seems the desire to dodge taxes and oversight while maximizing fortunes never goes out of style, at least for those who can afford to pay to play offshore. The future of the Cayman Islands and the world depends on the choices and actions that we make as individuals, as communities, and as countries. Will we continue to accept or even support the offshore system as it is, or will we demand or even create a better system that is more fair, more transparent, and more sustainable? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this documentary and learned something new. If you want to see more documentaries like this, please subscribe to our channel, The Market Detectives, and share this video with your friends. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. See you next time on The Market Detectives.